Hi and welcome. This is the chart reading and Q&A for the transmission. So transmission is going to uh, be composed of three different activations. The first activation is your drive and that is by your conscious Mercury. The second activation is your conscious moon, which is the drive. And then the third activation is your values, which is your conscious Venus. So we will be working and weaving with those activations with the charts that we have. It's also potential to ask questions. It is very helpful when we are lurking at looking at charts for there to be a focus question instead of like an overall thing. So when we're thinking about transmission, you're thinking about your messaging, you're thinking about your voice, you're thinking about these things that you're putting out into the world. And that is going to be connected to your Mercury, which is how you relate, communicate here, and then also connected to your moon, which is about your drive. It also is fueled by your emotions as well, because the moon is connected to the emotional realm. And so we have to have some kind of emotional investment in what we're sharing and saying, otherwise it falls flat. So emotions are brought in to what you're sharing. And then also your values, which we can look at Venus for, because it is also how your mind works, what it cares about, and so what it puts all its attention on. So when you combine all of these together, you're going to have the transmission. So to know that things are going to land with people, you got to make sure that the marketing, the messaging is aligned with like what is important to you and what is in your chart. So we'll be looking at that in your charts today. So the first people that we're going to be taking is people that have purchased the course. So please do not upload your chart if you if you haven't purchased it. So first we'll take the people that have been either in either values, drive, or voice masterclass. We like to use genetic matrix because it is going to show us the gate, the house, and the sign. And then also there is quantum HD chart where again, it shows the gate, the house, and the sign. But if you only have the main foundational chart, then we can work with that. We just won't have the specifics of the house and the sign. And I'll show you, let me just show you what these look like. I, okay, okay, so you can see that in the quantum chart, it looks like a natal wheel, like normal astrology wheel, except it also has the gate, which isn't normally on the natal wheel. That's what we need because we need to know what archetype it's in. This one has both personality and design side. We're just going to be focused on personality side because we're working with the conscious activations. And then over here is the human design quantum astro chart. This can be found in genetic matrix. Both of these can. As long as we have your quantum foundational chart, which looks like this without these two columns, that'll be fine. As long as we can see the planet and the gate, we can work with that. So don't get too caught up on having that or not. But yeah. So let me take this off. Who are we starting with? Kelly, did you, were you in one of our master classes, Kelly? Yeah. Which yeah. One did you... uh, the Mercury. The okay. Voice. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I guess with the these two charts, what is the house? Like, how do we interpret the significance of the house that it's in, the Mercury? Okay. There you are. I'm going to share my whole screen because she shared two charts. So we'll look at this one. So you're, we're going to look, so your Mercury activation is going to be gate 28.3. It's a Scorpio and it's also in the eighth house, which is also connected to Scorpio. So having like, let's see, Sagittarius isn't normally in the 10th house. It's it's normally in the ninth house, but you, your Libra is in the seventh house, your Scorpio is in the eighth house. These correspond to each other. So it's interesting to have like double kind of Scorpio themes here. So your um, communication is going to be surrounded around taking risks, the risk taker. So I don't know in what way you communicate that to others, but since you have the 28 in the third line, you're going to be talking about taking risks, but the risk is to also discern the purpose. So you're here to be speaking about like the purpose of things like, 
What fight is worth the fight? What battle is worth the battle? What is the purpose of this lesson, this learning? Is that something that you you can connect with or relate to in what you already do? Like, is purpose really important for you? Yeah, personally, it's really important to me. And it's like what I've been trying to speak about is like how people can get like how we can let go of the past. And what's the point? I guess the purpose of holding on to the past. Although, yeah, I know like sometimes it's like, oh, we don't want to, we don't want history to repeat itself. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, it's, and I like the D3, how that fits into this too, that's coming up, like how to let go of that. What's the point in holding on to that? And what's really worth our time instead, like focusing on the future and what we can, the things we can have control over or direct. So it's not like you're going to be communicating what everybody else's purpose is or what risk is worth taking. You're going to be like, I've taken this risk and this is what how it's panned out for me. When I can identify the purpose of something, then I have the perseverance to keep going with it. I'm wondering too, how when you go through these emotional experiences, how you can sift out the wisdom and maybe we're holding on to them because there's still more wisdom to come from them because your Venus is also going to value like wisdom in the fourth line, just like sharing that wisdom, feeling that wisdom, accessing that wisdom through the heart. So maybe in some ways we have, you have some kind of like emotional attachment to the memory or to the thing or to the past. And so it's just keeps like, it it's just keeps hanging out. What else do you, so, and then your, your moon is in the, is in 5.4 which is patience and patience, timelessness. There is a natural rhythm and a natural order and a natural cycle. And some things are going to be let go of when they're let go of and some things don't. So I think you're discerning and discovering like the purpose of the emotional attachment to certain things and how we can't just let it go. We can't just let it die. Like we need to process it because we still need to extract some of the wisdom from it. So it seems like that's like, yeah, does that resonate a little bit? Yeah, totally. I definitely need the the patience and working on that. <laughs> the the testing of the patience is going to be what's going to create a lot of emotional content to come up because generally when you feel like impatient, you're going to feel the emotional charge. Like when my moon comes up, it's 4.2. So when I don't feel understood by the other, it creates a, a, a tremendous amount of emotional content in me. And so what you're going to feel in that impatience is all of this emotional energy coming up. Because it's like, it's what you value. It's like, I want to be on the right rhythm. You're slowing me down. You're pushing me to go too fast. Like, you're like, I've got a rhythm. Like, I want to set it. And Mm -hmm. it's important for you to be around others in that fourth line to connect with people that might generally be on the same rhythm or at least maybe motivating you to speed up a little bit when you're taking too much time or going too fast. You're going to have those people that come in to slow you down. It's like, don't move too fast. You're missing this thing. Mm -hmm. So, and that's just my, my, my perspective of it. Great. Thank you. You said the third line is more personal um, communication. First line, second line, third line are the personal lines. And then fourth on is transpersonal where you're at the threshold between personal and transpersonal. So you're having many different experiences with taking risks and them not panning out and be like, oh, wow. Okay. That. It's about you being like lighthearted in like this search for purpose and this search. It's like Bella actually can speak to this. This is her pearl. So I don't know. Do you want to elaborate a little bit more on this or is there anything you want to say before we move on, Bella? Yeah, there are two things about this chart, but let's start where you're at. The third line in in Mercury has to do with being okay with whatever is going on in communication, basically. So often in communication, there's something to be learned, right? It's something to be understood. So when you have a third line, you are here to assimilate and be okay with anything. As in all the third lines, there is a kind of choicelessness. And the third line, which is connected to the solar plexus and the fire uh, element, is okay. And in your case, when you have the 28, which is Scorpio, it's also okay with intensity. There is something here with transformational processes that you're okay with. And you're okay with it in a very 
unique and personal way because you have a marker that's retrograde. So it's like your own unique way. And it's not, it's a little bit more introvert first, maybe before it comes out. So that's in the Mercury, like in the, in Mercury precision, a third line is about assimilation, about being okay with whatever is there. And knowing that if I can be okay with now without escaping from this conversation, escaping from this group field where there is maybe dissonance, then there is something that can come out of that and understanding and even a gratitude for what's been learned. So you are holding the intensity of those human processes of interaction and communication. And the 28th in general, yes, this is my pearl. I also have my moon in the 28th. It is a daredevil, but it's not necessarily a daredevil that jumps out of a cliff and says, oh, I, I'm so courageous. No, it's an exis existential courage. So you are going to take risks for a purpose. And the purpose is existential, meaning, knowing it's uh, individual circuitry. So it is for your own empowerment, your own inspiration. And the other thing I wanted to just point out in your chart that I can really hone in on is that you are for the essential. Like if it's too much stuff, it's not for you. So we look at your body graph, you're the trivial being, you have three centers, you have the life force in the sacral, which is circulated to the true self, the G, and expressed in truth. Like that is a trivial being, the being on the future of the future in some sense. And there, of course, there's a lot of openness, but it really where your home is in this trinity of those three centers. And I also look at your sun and your earth being the one and the true, the, the one and the two, the prime yin and the prime yang, also in some way this essential, right? And then your Mercury also here being in, in that gate of death and rebirth. So I would say if there is something that to focus on is to focus on the essential and to not get to pulled away in other things and to know when things need to die and when it's time for something new and fresh. Yeah. So the D3 is very, <laughs> yeah. But just one last question. How is that, how might that tie into the, like the lacks of defiance too, like the Mercury? Does it? To what? <laughs> to the left angle cross of defiance. Um, oh. the, yeah. Oh, her incarnation. Uh, you are a rebel. And but you're it's important for you to not become fixed. If you are if you're a six two, you're in some way with this very individual one and two, dinky one and two, and then with a 49 and the and the four, it can be fixed on its own thing. This is a fixed cross. So I feel with the six two profile and this 28, it comes to shake it up a bit and say, Yeah, you're not here to just be completely fixed on your thing. You're here to have the big perspective, and you're here to also take existential individual risks so always that balance between the personal and the transpersonal somehow and it's very important that your rebellion has a cause especially with that mercury and with that moon the five it's all about the truth and the higher purpose Sagittarius so and it's about the heart as well with the fourth line in the moon so it's a rebel with a cause that has a deeper purpose mm -hmm. perfect thank you so much both of you thank you <clears throat> okay i'll just highlight what it is and then bella you can start so karen has her mercury in 27.2 and this is a taurus gate in the 11th house she's got her moon in 28.5 oh look at that 28 just showing up again 28.5 is her moon scorpio gate in the fifth house and then we have venus which is values in gate 51.2 in aries in the 10th house so we've got the 11th house, the 10th house, and the 5th house. And I would love to hear, Karen, do you have a question or a I actually, Yeah, I actually have a number of questions. I, the whole, I'm a 1-3 profile, and I'm noticing with these three particular placements, the line 2 and line 5 resonance feels very um, unfamiliar to me in some way of like understanding what that feels like and how that manifests because I feel like I really get the one three thing but, but I don't necessarily understand that two five thing the second piece of it is that moon mercury opposition is something I'm very aware of and in the that whole like line two line five resonance I feel like I struggle with that placement. And so I feel like if I have a better understanding of the, the line two, line five component, it might help. And then my third piece, and it's like rapid fire question, sorry. My third piece is that the the 51 two, my Venus is in, it's conjunct my son, but it's in my undefined 
ego center. And so both the 27 and 28, I have full channels for, but the 51 too, I is a hanging gate in an undefined center. So that's a little harder to grasp also. So those are my pieces that I'm trying to weave together. Yeah, thank you. And what's your, so let's say you are a manifest, no, you are. I'm a manifesting you? generator. Okay. Um, I can share the other chart too, if you want it. I just think. No, I think we're okay. Um, okay. Yeah, what, what stands out to me when I see your chart, it is that conjunction with the Mercury, your Mercury and Sun, and you're saying it's in an undefined center and you're one, three. So I can see that there is some inconsistency, but we could call it also just life because you are the cross of penetration and things are supposed to happen. So I feel like that's part of what the adventure of your life is to have that in some way out in the in out in the world because the 10th house and you have your sun and your mercury there and it's not supposed to be fixed it's not supposed to be like it's supposed to, you're here to be be an Aries and you're here to come with the spark and the impulse so I, I feel like that's part of who you are but then let's look at this theme that you said about the five and the two I feel that there's a projection there right? So it's five and the two both have a projection. People are going to project to you in your everyday life, in your like personal connections, in when you communicate, when when you like what you like in the world, when you nurture in the world, there is a projection field there. And I, I believe <laughs> the question is like, when I see somebody with the 28.5 moon, which is actually my moon as well, but in the six line, I know that there is an intensity in both your and my case, we have that moon, that Scorpio moon in the fifth house of creativity. So how have you been able to take the intensity that maybe in some way was interpreted as, as not nurturing for the child, because the child all is all about the cancer nurturing waters, right? But we were thrown into this world being reflected back in a very intense way through Scorpio. And there is, for us, a lot about reclaiming that intensity as ours. And when we do that in both your and my case, there's a creativity that comes out of that. But you also have kind of the, the pressure of projection there. And in some way I have the pressure of, of role modeling, right? Because I have a six line. So it seems for, to me that really part of your process is to reclaim that moon and make it yours. And then the shocks are gonna be more initiations than shocks. And also, I think that is how really your Mercury comes out and becomes more of that stable, nurturing, Taurus stability. The 27th gate is part of that channel of the tribal channels of, of how we nurture. So it seems to me that the moon is leading and how you're able to relate to that moon and how you are are able to live out that moon in a different way than your mom lived out her intensity. Mm. So would you tell us anything about that can allow us to go, go somewhere from there? Yeah. It's funny because my mom is also a Scorpio moon and I, and that's been something I've been aware of. I have to think more about that intensity and how like, it's one of those things that I say, like sometimes you just live an experience and you don't know, you can't identify it necessarily. I always say like, if you ask a fish about water, it doesn't know what water is because it's mm -hmm. just been my normal experience. So I'm not sure that I know what that is. Um, yeah, so maybe I'll, that's your own inquiry, but those those things seem important. You have your mercury in a second line, which is the line of, feed, of feedback. So there is something that in the ideal communication for you, what we looked at in the masterclass is that you are here to respond in, not because of your aura type, but because of that second line being connected to the sacral. And when you have a second line Mercury, you have this natural response. So a feedback, like your genius in communication is that feedback. And in many ways, looking at where it is. So it's in Taurus for you and it's in the 11th house. You probably are going to have feedback about the Taurus kind of themes, right? It could be financial, it could be stability, it could be uh, the senses, it could be uh, how we live better, what what's of value, like the, the, the typical Taurus things. And then it could be for improvement of the world, like the 11th house. So there, so to feel into, in your communication, I know you work in education. So do you feel like you have a genius when it comes to like, like 
intuitive or more intuitive, instinctive almost feedback. You always have some feedback and that can help people to learn more about themselves, to understand themselves, each other. Like, Do you resonate with that second line of Mercury as natural feedback that really helps in in communicating, in, in dialogue? Yeah, I think so. When I'm teaching, a lot of times I like I need the feedback. It's funny to say I need the feedback and I'm, it's always a struggle in some classes that the kids don't respond. And I'm like, I need to know where you are so I can keep, like, I know where to go next. So that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's part of your orientation. And also the tonate says, like, is there a purpose that I'm here, like, teaching this? Are you with, yeah, that's definitely the tonate that wants to feel the other, feel the purpose. So that makes super mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. And maybe just the last part with your IQ or your Venus, it's, you have a brilliant mind. And I think that sometimes you might even have been too quick for yourself. Like we spoke about that a few times ago, I think like you burn your yourself in both ends. So there is just something with like seeing you are here to quantum leap, but it is an open ego center. And it's all it's like a little bit of awareness and carefulness sometimes about that witness and the, 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 the fast fire that is your life. Like I feel that would be something to look at. And even when your mind goes do you have how is your like do you have open head and ajna or defined head and ajna open completely open ajna and an undefined head yeah so there is something in some way where your mind could be too fast for yourself somehow and that's maybe why you want to ground more into like the taurus energy in your communication and ground the things that are going on in more in the body in in like in the material realm somehow um, okay Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It makes sense, doesn't it, that she's in an education where her communication is like in the 27 with the 27 and the 50. Makes mm -hmm. complete sense. And also taking risks. The 51, like, but are you taking like, I don't know, too, is there too much? Is there ever too much gall? Is there ever too much courage? Is there ever too much like risk taking? And then people don't come with you where you're going. So, hmm. Interesting. Mm. Okay. We're doing really well, Bella, with like time of chart mm. readings. We're like, we're doing super good. <laughs> okay. We got Agron and Jackie, and then we have some people that weren't, didn't attend, I don't think. I don't know if didn't. Bonnie, can you just let us know in the chat if you did attend one of these? master classes since you have more of a foundation okay so we'll keep that in mind jackie what oh, is well, what there's a transit here oh is this a transit one yeah for sure does that not work it's a little bit confusing because the transit <laughs> in february yeah. in Let's ding. um what I'll are we doing? House. What are we doing in February? What's this transit for? <laughs> no, this is like all. Oh, this I is had. this year. I, just pick up, I picked up my kid from school, and I'm like, oh my god, we can load something. So one hand, it's really bad mother of the year. So that's right. all I had on my phone. <laughs> well, we have the personality side. Is there anything specific that you want to know about it? And we'll just yeah. focus on. Yeah, that's cool. We can. Yeah, that would be great. So I feel like. I'm at a point where I'm like, what's the point? And it, it's been my life all the time. Like it, it's been done. This has been done. What's the point? I feel like I have, so I've been teaching Pilates for the last 20 years. At the end of it, which was probably a year ago, I'm a master teacher. So it's pretty cool. However, and I love it, but I'm, I have a problem with it because it caters to the elite. Somebody that can pay 150 come in once a week and I, it's just not I don't feel like that's that suits me at all and I didn't think about that when I got in I just loved the thing so I'm like I got to be more to more people getting a reading once every three weeks is way more affordable or even a massage than Pilates which is like you got to go there every week and COVID changed things too it's people are like more independent which is wonderful so I have been thinking about my I don't know a lot about Gene Keys but I have been thinking about how with other people, with people in general, I'm great. I love people. 
and I am not shy to let them know. But I feel like with my uh, with my exes, even when I was in marriages, I feel like they would say she's cold, and I don't know what it is. I don't know what's my choice. I think the m main thing I want to ask about is what do I have here to offer that you see it jumps out to you? Bella, you're muted. Oh, it's almost like... All my kids are five ones. I, I, I know I'm not. I can that. only see your astrology and it's almost like if I can't see your soul, it's very <laughs> difficult. Like it, the That's fact that awesome. you come here and you're just showing me the cold side of you in some way, you're just showing me your personality. It's so funny. It actually doesn't allow me to see your soul or even communicate with them. So even here, you have created a scenario where I can't really wow. speak to the depth of you. Wow. Stop, Bella, you're Scorpio, so you can't, like, I'll just take off the chart and then you just tune into her soul. <laughs> no, like, I, I <laughs> I'm want, just kidding. <laughs> I partly want to show you, like, I want to show you what's there for you, but there, it's almost like there's a part of you that you, in some way, are protecting or hiding, and maybe that is a felt sense of the people near you. And a part of me feels, if I'm going to feel into that, it has to do with the cultural mm -hmm. background. Like, where, what's your, like, where, where's your ancestry from what's the country or culture yeah I'm from Hong Kong but I left at 13 years old to come here begged my parents to let me leave and so I've been here since then I'm a manifesting generator for six Pisces Leo moon and Scorpio rising mm -hmm. yeah Scorpio mm -hmm. rising yeah I see the rising yeah so your south node is 12.3 and Libra and yeah. then my North Node is Sag. I feel like there is some imprint from the past could have to do with the South Node there is a like what is purity in that culture and there's a misunderstanding about what that is and you're here to like find your own idealism your own ideal your own light mm -hmm. your own dynamism your own stability like going from going from the eighth house to the second house yeah like going to the second house north node um and there is yeah i i feel like for me what i feel into is that there is a new way like there is there's a new way that you are creating that has like that hasn't been done in your lineage before but you can okay. come to that by your son. You're here to become and to learn about what it is to be a Pisces. And it's almost like it's not in your whatever culture. Like, what's the what would you say the culture is in Hong Kong? Like, how do you would you describe like what? Oh, you can't. I actually just did a family constellation on. I was part of the constellation and part I was the I was representing authenticity. Mm -hmm. And what the message from that constellation for me was this kind of work that you're doing and the kind of work that I stepped into it's a no in my culture yeah it's not practical it's not tangible it's too mm -hmm. woo we don't even have AA in Hong Kong that's how much in denial we it's a shame it's shame so we can't look into the shadow work it's a shame you don't talk about that stuff that's where I came from yeah, and you see all the air you have from Mercury all the way down to Uranus. It's all only air signs. So you can try to bypass this with your mind, but we people are not going to be able to feel you on the other side. It's always like something that's missing in the flesh of the skin, in the depth of the emotion, in the fire of the heart. Like it's almost like what you share with people is the air element and it makes uh -huh. sense. It makes mm -hmm. sense what you yes. say. I want to be for more than just like the high pe high end people that can do the Pilates. Like everything you right. say makes so much mm -hmm. sense. As a four six, you have all the logical side. Some Ash has told me yesterday, no, this morning. She said sometimes I forget you're human. It's not until you cry I actually realize that you're not this super objective being that just is not human. And that made me cry because I can see as a four <gasps> six how that happens and then we seem cold but we're not cold we're just trying so hard but the, the heart is there and that's your profile the four and the six line the heart and the perception they want to be included them together and it feels like you're okay. more giving people your objectivity the air element so that you are okay. a, a suffering yourself or starving yourself on the <laughs> depth of the air i'm sorry the, the water which is also the scorpio ascendant and the pisces sun and then the fire that's there in, in your moon which is a personal leadership nothing to do with culture is what the, is my passion 31.5 your moon leadership and then 
you don't have that much stuff to ground it in. You have a Virgo evolution, right? So how do you ground this new leadership, these new thoughts, this new understanding into physical form, into marriage, into relating, into serving mm. from a new place? Mm-hmm. And that's a bit of a challenge. But that's where you would look in your chart at your soul side and to see, okay, okay. this is what my soul is guiding me to. So maybe, yeah, I don't know, maybe even... Look at it yourself or contact me and Ashley so we can weave yeah. what we said. I'm like going to, I'm like going to explode with all the things I want to say. And I'm like, oh, can't say them all. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, we have taught, we, you're in the inner circle too. And you're part of di- the different things that we're doing. But the one thing that I'll say too, is that you've got, so values 41, moon 31, those are programming partners. And then your Mercury is 30, 30 and 41 are channel. It's a channel. Mm-hmm. You're here to anticipate a new feeling. So what do you want to feel? And if like you're cold and people can't touch your heart and it's so ironic that you pulled up the cross of planning in the transit, which is all focused on community. And you're like, I I don't want to, I don't offer things to the elite, which in your South node would be the 12 that Bella mentioned. It's like all these people like, I'm so amazing because I'm a master's Pilates person and you got to pay a bunch of money. You're like, well, that's not really me. Like, ew. Yeah. yeah, you're like, ew, exactly. Because that's where it came from. And that's the shame and the pride of the culture that you came from where they're like, no. And look at your Lilith. Your Lilith is in 61.2. We call it the mystic. And it's in the third house of communication. You're here to communicate through your mystic. But there's so much shame around the mystic yeah. because it wasn't accepted in your culture. So you're like breaking yep. the pattern and the paradigm. And you got out earlier because you're bringing through a new ideal. And those new okay. ideals are what you're here to like direct people towards because you've got the 41. This is about feeling a new feeling. The, the, the 31 is about direction, right? Of the leader. It's like, we're going to go this way. And it's very powerful because it's in the fifth line. So you're feeling very powerfully that, no, this is not the way to go. I need to go this way. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to come to the United States or I'm going to like, I'm going to try something different because I'm not reaching as many people as I know that I can. Yeah. Got it. You're doing it. Huge. You're this is huge. It. Yeah. Thank feel so forward into much. it because you are here to consistently feel into and communicate what's coming for you. You're investigating that you're investigating what you're anticipating. So investigate what you're anticipating and communicate it, like speak it out. Be like, I'm feeling this. This is what I'm. And you're here to create the new way forward to create the new, like the first line is here to create. But also just check yourself to start with every time you go to that air element, to objectivity, thinking uh-huh. about it, but not embodying it. Because there are all the ideas, there's all the versatility in the air element, Gemini and Libra and, and Aquarius. It's all, you're so good at seeing it and understanding it, but it's really about embodiment. It's like, how do you start to embody the other element? How do you start to bring in the passion and the depth and the emotion and like all the things that both Ash and I spoke about? So, so checking yourself like, oh, I'm like, um, when that cold, when you, I think you can pinpoint when that kind of coldness or detachment is there and to see how to in some way become more human, which is a lot of that path for the four or six profile. Like, how can I become more human? How can I be okay whether it's me being okay or the pressure from like the past and the conditioning to be in a certain way. Like, where can I allow more humanness? Where can I allow more heart into this? Where can I allow mm. more connection? That it's not just the kind of polite or like the ways that we have learned from our culture that we are supposed to relate in, but the ways that you actually feel alive when you relate in. Okay. Is there anything you mm. want to say? Because you said this is huge. Like, would you just like to say something about that so put words on it so it doesn't go just (laughs) around in your head I wonder how motherhood can how I can look back at motherhood because the the oldest is 22 I wonder how I can look back at that and say you know what I know how to be human because they're awesome Mm. they're awesome little human beings and so it's not that shitty having me be their single mom so I, I wonder like how I can maybe if that is the biggest school of my life despite all the other stupid things that don't matter, like Master Pilates trainer. They taught me how to be human. They taught me how to take a risk. Mm -hmm. Uh, They taught me how to grow my heart. They taught me how to go into, step out of being uncomfortable. They showed me the strength. So maybe my own motherhood can teach me, this 22 years can teach me how I can be for other people. 
mm-hmm. and not just have it be like, oh, they grew up, l- 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 uh, finished college. All right, that's done. No, it's not done. Now you got to go back and review the notes. Why don't you go back and review the notes, put them in front of you because that's your air talking about them. And then, cause I can feel the emotion behind it. Like you could cry about it, but then you can move forward into the next thing that you're saying. So write them down and then you need to, are you in the inner circle? So why don't you join D3 with us? Like come into that container so that you can lay to rest some of these patterns and then the fresh new start. And that is what it's for is the fresh new start, the 41. So like, what are you laying to rest? What do you want to discontinue? So unsubscribe from, and then what's coming in that's new and so creating for D3? a space. D3, it's in the inner circle. I'll send you a message. Like you're already Thank in the you. inner circle. So you get I it. Have... I'll send it to you. <laughs> I'll send you thank the you. info. Okay. All right. Um, Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. So we've got Agron. Agron, what's your question? Ladies, how you doing? So real quick, can you go over fuel for the Merkaba? And then also, so values, I have, what is it? 35.2. Can you talk a little bit about quantum leaps and then anything else that you see? Yeah, when you're looking at fifth house of creativity, Gemini, 35 is a Gemini gate. It's also about communication. What what do you feel like you're constantly like yearning for, hungry for? Because the second line can also be extremely bored. Adventure. Okay, adventure. And what kind of adventure? Trying new things, traveling, meeting new people. Okay. And so that's what you value. That's what is important for you. And the brilliant mind is like, it's just very quick. Like, and so it's going to also maybe move on to the next thing. I'm not sure. It's about whatever you're in, invested in and in flow with. It's like you're dancing that dance until you're not dancing that dance. And like you're, the second line also goes to the edge of the edge. So it's almost like you're like, what more? What, how farther can I go? Like what other adventure? How farther can I go in this too? I feel that the most in spirituality. Yeah. Yeah. And then your moon is 62.6, which is conjunct your life's work and conjunct your EQ. Yes. Because we, I remember you have that three times. So, and then your Mercury is 4.2, which is about that. That's probably why we communicate well together is because my moon is like connected to your Mercury. So it is about understanding. It is about being understood. It is about understanding. It is about having these experiences so that you can understand and maybe even sharing in relationship too. Seventh house is partnership relationship. So it's like understanding why things failed or understanding like what's a success? What's a failure? What did I learn from these things? And like, that's the realm that you are creating understanding through and you're a defined emotional authority being. And so you're also here to be succinct and naming too, like, cause the 35 is connecting to the emotional realm. So it's like, it's not worth it unless you're feeling deeply. And so what is it that you're feeling? And can you name what you're feeling? Can you identify the minutiae and the details of like, this was grief. This was this, this tastes like this. Think about your 35 as being like a, what's it called? Like somebody that tastes all the different things. It's like, you give them the food and they're like the food critic and they're like, oh, this wine tastes like it has this and this in it. So it's almost like your life's work and your moon and all the other ones that you have conjunct. It's like, oh, I can sense and feel these kind of this emotional content. And it's not just emotional stuff. It's other things that you can really name, like pull out of the bits. Like this wine has notes of pepper or whatever. And it's because you know what pepper tastes like. So you're like, I'm not going to be done until I taste the whole flavor of the rainbow of emotions. Right. And I know for you, in a way, it has been difficult because you're a a man and it's like emotions weren't prioritized, but it's almost like in this season of your life, you get to taste the rainbow. And that's what comes for me. And also I'm biased because I know you. And so (laughs) let's see what Bella wants to to say, because we have a little bit of, of time also. Oh yeah, I felt like too, we have looked at this chart in some other webinars, so I didn't necessarily go to the moon. And Venus and Mercury, but maybe I should go to the third line Mercury again. So the assimilation of being okay with the fire and whatever is there and that Mercury in the seventh house. So there's going to be fire. There's going to be some assimilation and some stuff in the solar plexus that happens in in relationship and to be okay with that and to be in the understanding of that as well seems important in, in communication to not in some way to not just seek peace but also allow the fire because that's what's going to fuel the adventures 
So what stands out to me is that you have quite a lot of important retrogrades. So your Jupiter, your expansion is retrograde. And then your Saturn takes a while to learn the lessons. And then even your cramping leaping is erratic and a bit delayed maybe. And then your Neptune, your veil is also something that's going to take a while to look through. I actually feel like you're co-creating the delays. <clears throat> and I think that they are supposed to be there. But it's, but again, I think that the, the component here in your communication and in the fire of the solar plexus of this third line and the Leo, which is personal leadership and personal passion, I feel like you're delayed because you're trying to take all the responsibility from your Capricorn uh, ascendant and all the cancer energy with your sun, your EQ and your moon to like be responsible for everything and everyone and nurture everything and everyone. And that delays you to really be able to live your true communication with the world and your true adventure, what you actually really value. So I would say if you are actually going to live that event adventure that you value, you need to listen more to the closer planets that are directing your chart than to the outer planets that are retrograde, both in the, on the soul side and the personality side, because that, that's going to, in some way, lead to even more delay. And don't be afraid of the fire. Don't be afraid of what's going to get burnt down. And in retrograde, the, 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 there's still going to be an understanding of what what burns down and the north node in the second jinky is orientation in every moment in the now mm -hmm. um, and in the third line too even if it blows up it's orientation every moment in the now even if it blows up and yeah that's it mm -hmm. yeah I remember the soul also has a lot of impulse right looking at the areas in the 12th house of the soul like so much stuff in the if you look at the wheel so much stuff <laughs> that's there that just wants the, wants the soul's wants hanging out of the Aries and apologize after so I would follow the impulse and apologize after and see if it feels less if it feels more like quantum leaps and less the, as less as delays but don't be irresponsible <laughs> be irresponsible burn it up wow. burn it up it is funny to look at all the soul activations Remember too, because you have the third line and a couple other people have the third line in your Mercury and Bella is mentioning assimilation. It says, trust the process, stay with the process, even when it's uncomfortable, alchemy will happen. So against your best efforts to escape it, we have to trust that the process is for us and we'll understand later too. It's so much it's fire energy. So it's be able to be in that fire and know that even if you don't know where it's going to lead, it's supposed to be like that. And being mm -hmm. able to assimilate that, being able to be in that dynamism, even if it. And for you, because it's seven house, it's going to happen in relationship. The intensity is going to happen with the other in your case, because that's where your marker is placed in the wheel. Mm -hmm. Any anything about that? Like, do you, let's give you a voice too. No, yeah, that's been the theme. I try to I try to minimize the the fallout. So yeah, definitely resonates. Thank you, ladies. Yeah, the third yeah. line doesn't really care about that. So in the, those places where we have a third line, it's usually bonds made and broken. It's not forever. And it's more about my desire, my solar plexus, my fire, my adventure, my dynamism, my playfulness. Mm -hmm. And when the third line tries to be approved of or tries to like be in a certain way, then it's killing itself or its own genius, you could say. Yeah, there's so much value placed on the transpersonal lines. And we have to remember one line, two line, three line. It's for the self. So like we can't say I'm being so selfish. I need to do this and that, especially if you have a lot of Libra or seventh house, act, seventh house activations, you're going to be pulled to the other and then you neglect yourself. But the personal lines, they come first, like fulfill yourself first, have these adventures first. They're not for others. They're for you. And like the juice that comes out of them is what you get to share when you're in connection with other people. So we need to drop the stigma of like selfish because like. Yeah. So don't allow your profile five to, or especially the personality line five and your Capricorn ascendant and your, your that powerful conjunction in cancer that the responsibility and feeling like you have to nurture the whole entire family that can take away all the adventure and everything you value. And also the way that you're here to communicate in the world, because you're over here taking responsibility for family in some way instead of communicating your adventure and your, in some way, genius that you're here to evolve into and share with the world. 
as a 5-2, which is like the real, in some way, the real mission of that 5-2. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm going to pull up Bonnie. Yeah, I'll check in the chat if there's a question. My question is, what can I lean into to overcome a struggle with presence and owing my power? I will Only classify myself as repressed in almost every aspect with what I have studied in the Gene Keys. Okay, thank you. That's clear and concise. Oh, interesting. Everything that's in the 34. And it's... And Happy birthday! Alive. Happy birthday! You had a birthday! Yeah. Happy birthday! <laughs> I did. Thank you very much. Oh, Bonnie, your family is so cute. But why is the repression? There is so much in Sagittarius. There is so much in Leo. What happened? Well, your moon. Did you reclaim your moon? Like, are you even ready to receive everything that life has to give you? Or is that what, what you're like hiding um, and repressing from? I figured I would show my face since I'm here. My office is crazy. I'm in the middle of working. I'm supposed to be working, but I'm on this. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I've honestly, like, in all of the study that I've been doing, and granted, it's only been, like, a year and a half, maybe, that I've been studying any of this, so it's new for me, but when I studied it and I, like, looked at my chart, and the more that I look at my chart, I'm like, whoa, this is me? <laughs> like, I'm like, what? Like, I feel like a lot of it didn't didn't feel like me. It didn't feel like, like, I well, see a lot of the, how old are I don't you? Know, but I struggle to see the gifts and the majesty, like, the, my 34, especially, my 34. Were you, were you how old are you? Like 87 oh, 36 yeah she's okay so you are just now on the roof so you're a four six so you have a third a three phase life and between 30 and 50 you are in discernment phase so you're not really necessarily embodying your design until you come back down from the roof so that's okay when you have a six when you're a six line being it takes some time and the other thing going back to what we said about agron in your case your chiron is in that 35 so you have a hero's journey to embody and walk through in order to find your adventure in this life and that's also about where a lot of your creativity is the fifth house is going to start to move and then we can see that on the other side we've spoken a lot about the 28th today you have your pluto there which is a deep transformation and pluto takes 248 years to go around so it's like something slow and it can take a lifetime to transform uh so there is also can be like a bit of that risk taking or just jumping into it or finding even the purpose and like living it intensely it's also something that's part of your transformation process it's not there already possibly but then with a 34 in the sun and the two in the moon, I wonder again, this kind of balance between forcing things because that's how they are supposed to be and just allowing life. I see you have the 57 too. That's a lot of intuition. Like I wonder what parts of you you're stifling so that it feels like the intuitive and the feminine and some of these things are not really getting so much space. And maybe that's why your true expression isn't coming through. Like what is it that you are doing that you don't like? Like, the 34 is usually when we're not completely in our naturalism. We're doing things we don't necessarily love. Has that been part of your life? And in uh, the 10th house, it's like, has that been part of your outer life more than anything? I mean, I've definitely fallen into that, like not living in alignment feeling a lot. I feel like I'm climbing my way out now with the awareness that I have. But that's definitely a theme for me out of necessity, really, but as a mother and right. and then, things like that. But yeah, yes. And the same thing with Jackie. She's like, oh, this is the only chart I could grab. Yeah, that was telling in some way. And you come here and you said, I'm at work. So like, I, I don't know about camera. In some way, you are at work and you want to be here. So that also shows that you are <laughs> in the 10th house sun and you're forcing it to be at work, but you're still the Black Panther archetype that says like, I'm going to do what I want to do right now in some way. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I'm gonna listen yeah. to my heart, the fourth line of the of the 34. So to me, in your case, and a bit similar too, because even the responsibility and the thing we're seeing in Agron's chart is like he is trying to take care of something to then live. And in some way it feels too that you have a responsibility. You're trying to take care of something to then receive, to then be intuitive, to then be expansive, to then be natural, to then receive the magic. Uh, but it's almost like it's almost like when we do that every day, I don't even know if the liberation comes and you've already seen that you are repressing things. So I would start to look at 
your Mercury, your Venus, and your Moon to say, what is it on an everyday basis that you value? How is it that you live out what you feel? How is it that you ideally communicate? Because once you tune into those closer planets, you're kind of aligned with, with your blueprint so that you can create more of what you want. Thank you. Yeah. But yeah. so maybe, Ashley, do you want to speak a little bit about some of these? She has a six line. She has a Sagittarius community. Right. Like, yeah. What what do you, you, for, first, I want to ask you what you do. Like, what is your work? I am a photographer and I do graphic design and I also paint. Yeah, I saw the artistic part of it. I do all things creative. <laughs> oh, yeah, so that that makes sense to me. And also there's, you've got the 24 as your, as your North Node and you've got the 24 as your Lilith, which is what we spoke about with Jackie, where it was like she had the mystic archetype. And the mystic archetype was like, was shunned in her, in, in, in her area. But for you, the, the 24 is connected to the 61, which is interesting because it's like the addiction of the mind to keep returning and going back to things that have happened. And the addiction is like, it can be many ways. Like we use art as therapy, right? To help us calm the nerves, to calm the mind, to get out of the mental looping because you can go into this creative process and then you get out of the intellectual mind because it's it's more abstract. (laughs) Who's that? (laughs) Yeah. So I think that, and it's very interesting how when Bella was in your energy, she was bringing in all the people that we had already spoken about because your South node is the 44, which is about teamwork, is about the fractal, which is about the people. And you're a four, six and it's, and four sixes are about family and community. And so I think that you're used to being on team or with other people, but are the teams nourishing and who do you want to partner with to co-create with? What's the best I, ideal like geometry for innovation and creation to come through like who would you want on your dream team and like really getting into that inventor and innovator inside of you that is bringing through new things and thinking outside of the box and break, breaking outside of repetitive mental loopings or even like things that are just like they're not going to last over time and Taurus really wants things to last over time so yeah, I don't know. There's just something here with like like the addictive tendencies that keep you looping and then keep the things repressed. So it keeps you under wraps. And so I think that the best thing that you can do is to obviously like be more intimate with yourself, get to know, like see if these systems, like as you're digging deeper into things, like what does resonate? What is here for me? And maybe it needs to be said in a different way because also your Venus is in 43.2 and the 43 is going to, like tune into different radio stations and it's like some things will land and you'll be able to hear it and other things will be like no that doesn't make sense because they're not speaking your language so you're here to figure out like like get your own insights and epiphanies and hear it through your own inner voice which Bella was mentioning in the 57 which is in your Mars as well so there's something that you're here and 34 20 57 is all individual circuitry so there's something like the light bulb needs to come on for you and while these systems might give you the kind of portal into it, all of the epiphany will will really come through you. And so it's important for you to tune into that, those, the ability to let lightning strike, let the idea come through and explore the possibilities little by little every day. Thank you so much. That lands for me a lot of what you speak on in the 43, because I feel like even in just like the last two months, that a lot of light bulb moments have really happened for me where things have connected what I've like been studying in my chart. And it's like, oh, like I see this now. And it, I feel like that's starting to happen more and more. So maybe I am on the right path and just need to exercise patience, which is not my strongest suit when it comes to like how I would like to see myself developing. But yeah. I, and I tune into the receptive. Bella brought that in the very beginning. You want to receive the lightning bolt things. You can't forced to find it. It's almost in the silence that they come through. So you have to make space for the silence for the lightning bolt moments to come in. And if you're not, then you're, and you're 3420, it's freaking like go busy. So you have to like check in what's here. Boom, light bulb moment. But if you don't give yourself the space, then you're here to be a doer, a, a, a go do all these things. And then lots of, lots of, responsibilities and things to fill the space with but you have to be able to be comfortable with the silence and the aloneness um, because that can be the most scariest thing you don't know what's happening there 
right yeah, but we'll come that's, through. that feels very unnatural for me sitting in that silence and in this like waiting period so that's a struggle for me for sure mm-hmm. it's your lilith and it's your north node so you're living into that and learning into that um it's on it's your north node on both sides so really allow yourself the spaciousness to get into silence because the addictive strategies and coping mechanisms come from your avoidance of the silence where the epiphanies come which is what you value and you're also extremely sensitive so anyways we can go on and on with your chart but i'll stop here thank you i i appreciate this so much yeah. no problem thank you all right bella pick a person <laughs> person now i see everyone on my screen like what did i do all oh, that is not not so just doing tim so tim says my question is that building a small retreat center in the last two and a half years brought me very close to burnout i relaxed a lot into it but i'm still very exhausted and there are many things to do how can i reconnect to my power and enthusiasm and embody that the expand expansion which has partly happened already but wants to continue and continue to the opening up for the divine grace, which I can feel in good moments. Wow. Yay. Okay, so here we have a traditional chart. Uh, yay. Oh, you are the cross of the vessel of love. Yes. Yes. Where are you from? I'm German, but my place, which I'm building and where I am right now, is in Greece. Okay. <laughs> oh, so fascinating. Yeah, so you have a Capricorn Earth, I see now. Uh, yeah, and then you have a uh, you have a Cancer Earth. Cancer Moon, exactly. That's an interesting. That goes. That's the theme before, like the nurturing and the responsibility. So part partly your challenge in that ten, the Capricorn Gate, is the responsibility that you are here to nurture, but you're here to nurture liberation from the heart, Say fourth again. line the heart. And then 39, liberation. And there is also something about you are here to claim your own dynamism or claim your own provocation or claim your own triggers. So, but we are speaking a lot about reclaiming that moon. So what are you reclaiming that is different in, from how you were first mirrored back in Germany, if that's where you're born? Like, what is it in that relationship with, with your care, for your caregivers or in, even in the relationship with the ancestry that, like, you, I can see that your core wound or your vocation sphere is 31.4. So there is something there where you are finding your new, your own Leo leadership. And I think that your lineage in some way, they didn't find that Leo passion leadership, but you are here to liberate your own leadership, your own heart. But it goes through in some way, rejecting what's not for you and reclaiming what is for you. And you're very versatile in your communication. And it's like all these fourth line, your moon is a fourth line, your Mercury is a fourth line, your core wound of vocation, your design Mars is a fourth line. So you have a lot of fourth lines that are there and wants the connection, the kinship, but your costume as a cross, right? You're a three, five. So I think there also could be like a little bit of friction. You're a projector. So there can also be a manifesto. Wait, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, yeah, the 36, 35. Yeah, you're a manifester. So again, yeah, it's definitely your own way. What is it that is different? What you, what are you doing different than what was, than how your parents did it or your mom did it different? Like how are you living out at 39? The provocation, the dynamism, the liberation, the heart in a different way than, than what came before you? I definitely didn't fulfill the norm in any way. I always went very much my own, very uncommercial, unconventional way. And in a way also not very successful on an outer level way. Right. So so is that why you're burning out, you think? Because it's not successful. Like, what's the reason for this? What is what would you say is the reason for the burnout? What what wouldn't what's the ingredients that were missing? Or what was it that happened that is making you burn out? Do you have a team? That question. No. Okay, no. that's why he's burning out too. <laughs> I'm in the process of finding people, but I think for me this was a I lived as a nomad, like almost like a begging monk most of my life, not owning much and in a way, being connected to many things, growing a lot, but not ha- owning anything. And suddenly, 
due to an inheritance, I built those houses and there's so much stuff. And in the building in itself was very intense, but then directly going from building into trying to rent it out complete and the inner pressure to succeed and make it happen. But I just couldn't get it together anymore. I couldn't focus anymore. I couldn't, uh, I was very specific in how I did it. I give a lot of love to details. I love beauty. So I there were, there is so little energy left to push through anything because I pushed through so much more than any other time in my life before. Yeah, and a manifestor is not sustainable power. Yes. So it's almost like you're stuck in the old way of the South Node, right? The Capricorn, the 60 and the 54. It's like you have to get it together. You have to aspire. You have to take responsibility. You have to build. But that's the past. That's your. That's not who you are. And somehow, like I should say, I think that the team is important because you are here to have the, 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 the idea and start it and spark it, but not necessarily to sustain it. You're here to mm -hmm. initiate it, 5125. You're here to have the vision for the community, but you can't yes. be the only nurturer of that because Absolutely. then your own liberation is, is compromised. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not even living there now. I could live there. Also, it's, I, there's a community here which I'm quite connected to, and it's half an hour drive, and I, I don't feel like living there when i go out of the house i can meet people i know and there it's remote yeah the idea to make a center even came out of the wish to to create a field there but right now i'm still too attached to my old field here create so tell me the we've got a little bit of time tell me the intention behind like what is the retreat center for who is it calling in one part of it which makes a lot of sense to me, I'm internal markets. So I think it's good for me to have my own working space, create my own working space. Mm -hmm. But generally, I just want it to be a, a, a place for transformation, which is urgently needed in this world, where people can meet in a very truthful, very supportive way, very, yeah, very honest, very showing yeah and it's partly happening some people lived there already and got really a lot out of it i really want it to be win when people go there for me and for them and it works partly but not fully yet and it's yeah as you said it it, it needs other people and i'm looking for it and i'm maybe i'm finding something but so far it hasn't come together yet mm. How can that place be a respite for you to heal from your burnout? And then in a way, you have the energy to then call in more of that fractal, more of those people, because it's through the intimacy that you have with the connections with the other people and the stories from your travels and your globe trotting that you're able to like bring people in that are wanderers, that are seekers, that have a place to come be nurtured and nourished and then also expand. And I think this is a theme that showed up earlier for me and Bella too. And we were speaking to someone who had the 53 and we we're talking about the cancer energy. It's like when somebody needs that place of rest and respite, but then it's like in order to expand, sometimes we need to know that we're safe. So coming to a place where we can have retreat, where we can have nurturing, and we have the opportunity to dig deeper into areas that require transformation. So Bring maybe even like taking some people from where you're at now and be like, hey, I'm going to host this thing and we're going to come over to my space and then create a moment for you, create a transformational moment for you so that you can give yourself more energy because it does feel like you're in a waiting period of recuperation and then accumulation of the right and correct allies. It's like, who is on my team? Who's aligning with this vision? And I've sparked it, but I need people to help fill the space with love, fill the space with intention, fill the space because the space has been created and now you're looking for the experiences and the adventures to fill it. So yes. you are a world traveler. You are a nomad. And in your nomad travels, it has been like physically you've moved from place to place or different things, but now you're stationary. So how can you bring the adventure there? One of the... 
especially now in the winter season, which is not a, a traditional season for Greece, the, I'm there. There is this digital nomad hmm. theme. So I'm and co-living. So I'm. One idea is I I, I didn't follow through on it because I don't have the energy to mm -hmm. deal with so many people, but is to attract those kind of people. And it resonates very much with what you say. Hmm. Well, recuperation and regeneration, that's a lot of the theme of the 25. Oh, wait, just kidding. 25.5 and 46.5 is all about recuperation and regeneration. And when you feel like you need the therapy, you need the support, you go and seek it and find it. I have this as my nodes and the keynotes for the fifth line is like you're you need like when you are depleted when you need healing you go seek it and you go get it because you need to be recuperated yes that's why rejuvenation and recuperation keeps coming up when i'm looking at your chart yes so that's yes. where you're at and then you're creating the energy so that you can call in the people to do more of the heavy lifting or not even heavy lifting you've already done stuff so now it's to bring in more i didn't build the houses physically it's not, but still it's yeah. a lot no, maybe, maybe just a small thing. I'm, I, I'm completely on one page with you. I'm wondering whether to go really into a psychological uh, support framework or whether I will do something which is a, a dream, like like going on a on a longer sailing trip. And I, so I'm, and it, it and it also will show up more what feels like the right thing. But this is these are the two kind of breaks. Your purpose here, for your regeneration, your purpose here is the temple. It's the 46.5. Yeah. So anything that has to do with embodiment, being taking care of our temple, you have the 59 twice, which is intimacy. So to me, it's to go back to that place. And psycholo psychology, it goes in here and out here for you. Yeah. You have complete open head, complete open ajna. So I would maybe... But I would also look into your, a little bit more the astrology, like do the charts so that you have your astrology for the design and the personality too. And look at some, like look at the distribution of things. Look what you have in what sort house in your chart is that 46 in. Like there, there's a little bit more to discover, I feel. Then right. sometimes we look at one thing and we become blind on that. But like the, the little bit of that bigger perspective of, okay, zoom out and see in some way, similar to the people that were like burnt out here before how ready are you to receive it's not so much oh do i go this way or this way but like yeah. what is coming to me how do i nurture that's mm -hmm. that moon is like all about how do i nurture how do i nurture and the same thing your north node in cancer how do i nurture like you're here to learn how to nurture and we i don't think that you nurture the way that they did you already became a nomad and didn't nurture in germany but now you're in like a new adventures still in that quest like how do i nurture and life is going to show you when you're not nurturing. And I don't think it's psychology. I think it's way more, it's way more human uh, and like it's way more palpable in some way and visceral than psychology. That's not the answer. The answer is to feel the aliveness of what's here to nurture you and come through you. Not just because like there, there is something, there's a next step, like I was saying, I think that there is a next phase mm -hmm. But maybe you need to first come back to the temple and ground into that temple before that is shown to you. But it's because for you, we completely open head, completely open Najna, it's not, you're not here to consistently go about things one way and think them through. That's not the way that yes, yes. your mechanics work. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I think this is all that we have time for. I wish that we could get more of your charts but this was actually our last business by design trinity so we've actually completed 19 master classes over the course of this year it's actually a journey that we call sovereign so we had a mastermind that went through this whole process with us it was amazing and it's about to conclude we will be running this whole journey again next year so for anybody that is part of any of these master classes you're in a a group with us and any additional thing that we add like if we have more of these chart readings you'll be invited and included in it as well as any um, additional things that we're adding to the courses because every year we'll probably be innovating and creating kind of new things to support it so you'll have access to that depending on which 
masterclass you're part of. And some of you have been with us through the whole journey. So you have all of them. So there'll be another opportunity to walk with, walk through this with us. It's just the teachings are already done. So now it will be the integration, the transformation, the things that can come once the solid foundation is laid. So I have in the chat, the business by design masterclasses, all of them are in there as well as the complete journey. If you don't have any of them, you can get the whole journey. It's a two-part thing, business impact and business alchemy with the associated courses. If you wanted your chart read, but then you didn't get it, we have 20 minute business by design readings for specific activations. So that's just for like one of the activations. So you just specify, oh, I want drive or mercury and I'll put in, actually, I don't have anything to put in the chat. I You're going to need to know drive is associated with the moon. So then you know that we're going to be speaking about the moon. So you need to have the, and we'll put that in the BBD container. I'm but sorry. it also could be sign up for one of those and write in the notes right, what, it is. what the intention is. Like if you wanted us to weave exactly those three or whatever, like all of you had really cool questions today, which makes mm -hmm. it way easier. And partly what Karen was saying before, right? Or like, yeah, I think it was in that chart. Like to have the the dialogue with a person to know what's on the other side and what you need, what you want to dive deeper in. And Ashley and I, we do a lot in 20 minutes, like you see. So, so if you are specific, you're going to, you're, you'll get a lot of value, but yeah, I think what the, the most powerful thing is to walk the whole Merkaba because this is like a Merkaba. It has 18 or 19 different parts of it. So yeah, if you like these, check out next year when we're, when we are doing it as a journey again, because that's different than to come in for specific ones. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I'll put in the chat, the business by design group, if you're not part of that. And how do you want, how, is there anything else that we can like to wrap up today, Bella? Any next, next steps? Besides the ones listed. Today, what I learned is that it's important, even if we can zoom out and go really far out and even look at our design Pluto, if you want to, like there is something really valuable with the closer activations, the moon and Mercury and Venus. And they are there and they are big in our astrology. That's that's a system that's been used forever. They, and they are important in, they're important. And even if you're only a jinky person, then you would have, you wouldn't have messenger, like the sphere of relating wouldn't be there yet. So then you aren't even looking at Mercury. This is going to be part of the next step of the Jinky profile. We can already see we can already see that profile on the Jinky website. We it's not something that's taught yet. So bring in Mercury and bring in the Moon. If you're in the Jinkies, they need to be part of your hologenetic profile. They're so important in our everyday life. It's how we relate. It's how we nurture. It's how we reclaim part of our intensity and our emotionality in a way that works for us, so that we aren't depleted in the relating with the world and with the other. Mm -hmm. okay well i'm popping in the chat grab it because we're going to close soon reclaim which we spoke a lot on reclaiming your moon so that's something if you want to go into it's not necessarily a master class it's like a process of reclaiming where we do an we do some exercises together so it's more than just mental it's energetic and physical too so stay tuned because we'll be doing more with Business by Design in 2024. But for now, take a little bit of an integration break, go through the rest of the courses you've been in and just let things settle and let things land and see what's coming up in the body because we want it to land. Thank you all. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.